so somebody wanted to know what the difference is between papilloflebitis and non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. And so you can see right away that both are involving the papilla, which is the optic nerve head. In papilloflebitis, the papilla is swollen disc. And in NAION, this A is the swollen disc, which is anterior. They're both non-arteritic. So really, this is non-arteritic papilloflebitis because giant cell is an arterial disease and doesn't affect the vein, and that is a vein inflammation. So they're both non-arteritic, they're both anterior, and they both involve the optic nerve. In fact, they're both probably ischemic, and so it's easy to see how you would confuse these two conditions because they overlap in their clinical presentation. The differentiating feature is the phlebitis, the phlebitis. The inflammation is in the vein. And so in non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy, you have a vasculopathic older patient with the usual risk factors, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, etc. It causes a localized ischemia that produces swelling of the optic nerve. This leads to a field defect, often an arcuate or altitudinal field defect. And there's going to be an ipsilateral RAPD. In the contralateral eye, the cup to disc ratio will be small. The structural disc at risk for NAION. Your main job, make sure it's not AAION, giant cell, sed rate, CRP, talk to the patient about headaches, scalp tenders, etc. In papilloflebitis, the phlebitis is the differentiating feature, which means you'll have dilated and tortuous veins. And because the vein is partially blocked, there'll be mid peripheral intraretinal hemorrhages and there might be macular edema. The presence of this macular edema and these hemorrhages, as well as the dilated and tortuous veins, would not be expected in non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy because the AION zone is in the short posterior ciliary arteries and the annulus, the annular arteries of Zinn-Haller at the laminar cribosa. In papilloflebitis, it is a focal retinal vein occlusion. The disc is just swollen secondarily. The dilated veins are secondary. The hemorrhages are secondary. And the macular edema, all secondary to occlusion of the vein. So papilloflebitis may actually be a form of an inflammatory central retinal vein occlusion that is incomplete, and so you don't get the full four-quadrant hemorrhage, and it causes the swelling of the disc that can mimic NAION. But the key and differentiating feature is the phlebitis.